Amen. Whom are you looking for? What did you expect? What did you expect this morning? Came here with no expectations at all. Mary had expectations, right? She went to the tomb and as she was going to the tomb, she noticed something, right? Why was Mary going to the tomb? Ah, to anoint him. But was she? Hmm? I'm old and I'm, I'm half deaf. It didn't say. It just said Mary was going to the tomb, right? In the Gospel of John, just previous to this, at the end of chapter 19, Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus removed Jesus' body from the cross, and Nicodemus brought with him a mixture of myrrh and aloes weighing about a hundred pounds, of which they could anoint his body. She expected the stone to be in place. She expected to go and to weep over the dead body of Jesus. She expected to find him where they laid him a couple days ago. But she goes and the stone is rolled away. And she goes back and tells the disciples and the disciples run to the tomb, right? And the one that Jesus loves gets there first and he doesn't go in because he's scared. Right? Fear is a big thing with us. Fear is a big thing with the resurrection stories. There's a lot of fear. The disciple that Jesus loved or John did not go in because he was afraid of what he was going to see. He was afraid of what was going to happen. But Peter ran straight in and found Jesus had made his bed. Right? It's a lesson for all of us, all of us, right? Even if you're rising from the dead, there's still time to make your bed. And it rhymes. So it has to be true. Right? Peter finds what Jesus was covered in laying there. And they go away. And do what? Nothing. They go home. Mary came and told them that Jesus was gone. They ran into the tomb and they found it to be empty. And they simply go home. But Mary... Mary is there in the garden weeping in the garden, right? In the garden. What else happened in the garden? In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth and he created a garden. And when Jesus was done with the meal, the night that he washed the disciples' feet, he went out through the Kidron Valley to a garden that they all knew because it was one that Jesus always went to. And when Jesus was arrested, he was in a garden. And when he was put on trial, he was in a garden. And when he was crucified in the Gospel of John, it was near a garden. So this morning in the garden, Mary comes to the tomb and she finds it empty and she starts to weep and the angels tell her not to worry because Jesus is risen. And when she turns around, she sees a man that she does not know. And the man asks her, who are you looking for? Is the exact same question that exact same man asked the guards two nights before. The exact same question that exact same man asked disciples, many of John, many years earlier as they followed him. What are you looking for? What do you expect? 
And Mary, still not knowing who he was, asked if he knew where they took the body of her Lord. And at that moment, Jesus said, Mary. Have you ever not recognized somebody you've, you've, you've known forever? You're, you see somebody and you think you might know them. And then they say your name. And you instantly remember who they are. You instantly know exactly who that person is and the impact that they've had on your life. Can you imagine Mary standing there in her grief, crying over the absence of her loved one and turning around to find them standing there alive, calling her name? And she says to him, Rabboni, right? Which our, which our uh, reading says means teacher. Which is kind of true. Rabboni is more um, lord or leader. It is a teacher. But it's also someone who is a confidant. A person who helps you in life. Mary knew this man was there to help her. She expected to find him dead, but she comes to find out that everything that he had said to them and everything that God had ever promised is 100% absolutely true. Her expectations have been completely blown away by the sound of her name coming off the lips of someone that she dearly loved and someone that dearly loved her. And if you listen this morning in this garden, right? got a lot of plants up here now. It's kind of not a garden, but it is kind of a garden. If you listen this morning, I bet you'll hear him call your name. Because he loves you just as much as he loved Mary. Because the cross, he poured out everything for us. And on the cross, when he said, it is finished... What he meant was that death no longer has control over any of us because death is not the end and neither is Easter. This morning, Jesus Christ rose from the grave for the glory of God, the father to give us life, not to complete God's work, but to anoint us and to send us out into the world to continue God's work. Jesus Christ rose so that you could share his love with all of the world. And he'll always be there to walk by you, to comfort you, to protect you, to shield you, to give you friendship and joy on your, on your journey. So this morning of all mornings, we remember that Jesus rose from the dead for you. Right? Not for the world, for you. Because if no one else would have been here, he still would have done it for you because he loves you. So this morning we can say. Jesus Christ is risen today. Hallelujah. Oh, my gosh, really? Let's try that one more time. Of course, it's already been recorded, so all of prosperity will know. But here we go. Jesus Christ is risen today. Alleluia. There you go. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. One more time. I think we can do much better. I know we're not awake yet, but it's all okay. Jesus Christ is risen today. Alleluia. Yeah. Yeah, and he loves you. And if you listen, just like Mary, you will hear him call your name. And that will be the sweetest sound you've ever heard.